and welcome to another video. In this video, we will be talking about granulation. It's a topic that I've already made videos on, mainly filling a palette and swatching that granulating palette out for you guys, and you guys really seem to be interested, so I thought it might be useful to make a video about what it is actually and how you can use it and make the most of it. So let's jump into it. What is granulation exactly? If you look it up in a dictionary, it might say something like granulate. It is to form or crystallize into grains or granules. The term is not exclusive to the art world. It is also used in medicine or even in the food industry. But of course, we will be focusing on what it means in terms of our artistic process and the supplies we will be using for that process. In the artistic process, the granulating properties are mostly seen in watercolor paints. So they are quite a unique effect you can get using watercolors instead of other paints. Now to understand this process and this quality of watercolors, we need to go back and look at the basis of a watercolor. Watercolors are made up of pigments. And in order to make watercolor paint from these pigments, the pigments are milled first. Now, based on the type of pigment, the milling process is either easy or a little bit harder, and the results vary. So there will be pigments that are left a little bit bigger after the milling process and some pigments that will be a much smaller size. Now, as a general rule, small and fine particles will give you less granulation, so resulting in a more smooth and flat painted surface. Whereas larger, heavier and irregular sized pigments will cause more granulation and they can bring out some wonderful textured effects. Now, when you lay down a wet watercolor wash, at first the color pigments are suspended in the water of the fluid paint. Now, as the water starts to evaporate, the pigments settle onto the watercolor paper. Now, granulating pigments, due to their size, are heavier than non-granulating pigments, so they sink into the paper under the influence of gravity. Now, no matter what type of watercolor paper you use, you will be able to see the textured effect of granulating pigments on your paper. But results will vary because on the smooth, hot pressed paper, the pigments tend to do as they please and move around randomly until all the water evaporates. Whereas on cold press or rough pressed watercolor paper, the dispersion of the pigments is slightly more even and the pigments tend to fall into the low crevices and valleys of the rough surface of the paper. So it's clear that pigments have a great influence on the granulating properties of a paint, but brand and grade of paint can also influence the amount of granulation you see because the formula tends to vary a lot between manufacturers of paints. Also, student grade paints uh, tend to granulate a little less because the paint formula tends to include less amount of pigments since pigments is what makes the paint expensive. Now, besides these effects and influences on granulation of your paints, there are also certain colored pigments that have more sedimentary qualities than others. So for example, finding uh, red and yellow granulating uh, hues is really hard, whereas the blues and purples tend to be way more represented. So let's look at a few examples of different granulating paints. I will list what type of paint it is at the bottom of the screen so that if you're interested uh, and you maybe have this color, you can check out how that granulates for yourself. For these swatches, I used cold pressed paper, medium fine. Uh, I thought it was still a pretty smooth paper. Uh, not as smooth as hot pressed, but it, it was quite smooth. So that will have an effect on the granulating properties that you see. 
if I did speed up the footage, I also will show that in the left upper corner um, because sometimes it's really interesting to see the way the paint pigments settle into the crevices and how it looks over time. And I didn't want to bore you with 30 minutes of that type of recording, so I sped it up. Now, using this potter's pink is a very interesting uh, pigment, I think. This paint is made up of one pigment. It is the uh, PR233, so 233. And uh, it's pretty hard to re-wet actually. So you see me, I pre-wet the paint and I went in, but I still found it a bit too light to really show you guys the granulating properties because boy, this is one granulating paint. But it is only comprised of one uh, pigment. So you will only see one color uh, that granulates which we will get to different pigments being used in one paint that granulates next. This glacier green is a great example for a two pigment granulating paint. It uses PG50 and PR233, so the same pigment as the potter's pink. You can see me apply it and it's more blue, but as it dries, you can see the pink peek out. Also notice the size of granulation difference between these examples that I'm showing you um, and be aware that that is a thing and do your research before jumping in and getting a big tube of a color. Because of all these variations, it can take a little bit longer to really plan out a piece using granulating paints, but it is super worth it. This example is one of my favorites because you can really see the pigments settle into the paper as the water evaporates in the time lapse. So very satisfying. So now that we know what granulation is and what causes it and what influences it, let's look at what it's actually used for in the art community. So I put some examples up on the screen and as you see, it can be used wonderfully to create texture and um, some parts don't need to be super rendered, but you can still get that grainy, gritty, textured effect just by using granulating paints, saving you a lot of time making something look realistic. Now let's look at what I tend to use granulation for. I haven't shown it on my channel yet, but this is a piece that I have been working on using a lot of granulating paints. I think besides some white gouache, there's only granulating paints in this piece, creating a lot of texture and grungy looking effects and a creepy feel. As you saw in <laughs> the examples before, you don't have to go creepy with it, but it is a really nice effect to have on hand if you want to create something that looks a little bit more grungy and edgy than just flat washes. So how do you make your granulating paint granulate as much as possible? Now we've already mentioned that the type of paper that you use and the type of paint can really affect how granulating something can seem, but we haven't talked about water yet, which is, well, the word says it, about 50% of the whole process. Water control in any painting with watercolor is very important, but especially when using granulating paints, it can really make a difference. As you can see on the screen, using uh, less water, so staying very close to mass tone, will actually result in low granulation or lower granulation than you have when using a little bit more water and diluting the paint. Now something that can also help is as you can see on the screen here with Moon Glow actually has three pigments in there. Uh, it can help if you put water down then go over it with a wash of your paint and kind of play around with putting the paint down on the paper. So making it heavier in some areas and leaving it out somewhere else. Now, as you can see, if you let it settle for a little bit and then kind of wipe some of the pigments away, you can actually 
expose some of the underlying colors that otherwise would be hidden. So that can really help you create a stunning piece and with some effects that people are like, how did you do this? And then you can decide whether you share your secret with them or if you want to be mysterious about it and just smile slyly and look away in the distance. Now, I decided to also include an example of this technique with the Tundra Violet by Schminke because this is a granulating paint that I own that never ceases to amaze and surprise me because it is so versatile and creates effects that I never even thought were possible. So we put the first layer down and we go back in and deepen that color a little, adding some more pigment to one side of the wash. Now going back in with a brush and removing the pigment that I put down. And you can see that there's a blue tone under there and a little bit of orange that also disperses to the sides while the more purple color decides to stay in the crevices more. You can also see that this uh, paint actually lifts quite a bit. You can see the white of the paper right underneath. Now mopping up some of that extra, uh, extra access water and here I wanted to show you guys what happens if you go in with a dropper tool and just uh, add one drop of water to the paint and you can actually see that the paint itself does magical things with it creating a lovely lovely effect. So sometimes just let go and let the paint take over instead of wanting to control every single aspect. The results might surprise you. So the last example of this technique uh, I wanted to show you guys using the Glacier Green. So the one that had that uh, pink pigment uh, mixed with a green pigment in there. And you can actually see it's very light still. Going back in with some extra pigment and some extra color. You can already see that pink peeking out over there. And as soon as I lay another wash down it appears more bluish. Now with this example it also really illustrates knowing what your paint will handle like because as you can see I remove uh, a layer of the paint again like I did with the last two paints which looked great but here it lifts so much of the paint that it actually isn't a nice effect at all in my opinion but it might be what you're going for. So the last example I wanted to leave you guys with in this video is this splatter technique using the Rose of Ultramarine by Daniel Smith that actually uses uh, a pink and a blue pigment. Now as you can see when it dries you can see the separation between the pigments so well creating a lovely lovely effect. And with that last example, we have nearly reached the end of this video about granulation. So looking back, what did we learn? Granulation is a unique property to watercolor paints that can make it really easy creating nice textured surfaces. Now beginners may find this kind of paint more of a challenge, but if you're looking for amazing textures in your artwork, then it's certainly worth investing some time in playing around with granulation and granulating paints. I hope the information in this video was helpful for you. And if you like this video, maybe consider leaving a like or a comment or maybe even subscribing to my channel for more content like this. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.